Hi, everyone. Today is Tuesday, July 11th of 2023, and we're here for an early weekly crypto review, kind of in between, because last week I took off, and this week uh, you've got some uh, dental work coming at Moose, so we figured we'd get you while you could speak. How's it going? It's it, it's going great. I can't wait until I can speak without whistling through a, a hole <laughs> in my teeth line. Um, been waiting to get this tooth uh, fixed for a long time, and uh, so I, I can't wait. Um, kind of funny. I got it knocked out to kickboxing, but man, it would be nice to finally get this uh, taken care of. It takes so long. It took so long to yeah get a get a uh, get the actual implant uh, date set. So anyway, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at some of these things, Sam. Um, I want to kind of hop right into it today. Yeah, well, a lot of you, people think it's been a snooze or a week. Oh man, it's been an awesome seven, six, seven months. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, what a great time in crypto. Uh, the most hated crypto rally in the history of crypto rallies, ex maybe except outside of uh, 2019. But uh, we're seeing more money fly into the miners. Uh, this was just came in, I think, today. Um, basically, Vanguard uh, Group took a 10% stake in uh, the riot. Uh, crypto mining firm. So that's great. So we've seen um, at the end of last year and all this year, a lot of big money, Fidelity, uh, Vanguard, BlackRock, uh, you name it, uh, others uh, putting a lot of money into the miners. And the miners have just been tearing it up this year, the crypto miners. And, you know, people should keep in mind that, you know, these same miners, they can do lots of things. You know, they mine Bitcoin, they mine Bitcoin cash, they um, mine Litecoin, they mine Dogecoin, they do a whole bunch of things, but there's been so much infusion and such a need for high end uh, performance, high performance computing. A lot of them are doing uh, some of that outside of the crypto realm. And then a lot of them are, are doing some AI stuff as well, some AI processing. So been really great. Um, you know, we've seen the miners go up just, you know, it's, it's actually been incredible, hundreds and hundreds of percent. But uh, anyway, here's our list for today. If I re if I kind of sort them by the uh, compounds taken off, this is Corn Scientific. They were given a bunch of money. They were in bankruptcy and they were basically saved by BlackRock um, at the end of last year. Um, so they've been doing really great. But anyway, there's kind of our list. I'm really excited about crypto, man. Um, how have you been enjoying this week or this year so far? Well, uh, as you said, the most hated rally, we bottomed out uh, December 31st. And just to repeat, I was off. I thought we were going to have a Christmas rally, but it was a New Year's rally. And uh, I'm not surprised as to what's happening because I do see us taking a run to at least $3 trillion before we have a lot of upset that I'm seeing coming. Because, you know, you can you look at this and you know the financial system is changing. Um, you know, they can't keep things going. I, you know, the United Kingdom is in really big trouble. Like they're probably going to be the first country. Them and Australia are kind of in a bit of a contest because, <coughs> excuse me, things are doing poorly in China. Um, and a lot of manufacturing is actually fleeing to the United States. We're seeing the biggest numbers ever for manufacturing. So good news for the United States. A lot of stuff is um, moving around, um, but I definitely feel that we'll be running towards that 3 trillion because just so many good things are happening. And even in the markets, you know, AI, um, crypto mining, you know, it's just a matter of time before it's reflected into the cryptocurrency. So what we're going to talk about today is some of the news that's out there that maybe you, people haven't heard of. We're going to answer questions that um, people have posted. We've got a bunch of questions already there. And then, um, you know, we'll see if we've got some general information about just things that might be happening in the world that affect everything because geopolitical upset. I mean, look at what the Ukraine-Russian war has done to everything. I mean, it's really just changed the entire dynamics of the market. I mean, you really don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And France is kind of unfolding how you thought it would unfold. Uh, France is really having a rough time of it now. Um, does France make it? Do you think France is going to make it till the end of the year? I think that this is the end game for France. Um, that was one of the, I remember I said before that I find that the people on the other side, that they, when they give me information, you know, when they tell me, oh, the ring of fire is going to wake up and there's going to be, 
you're going to see some, you know, really big events that the entire world is going to see. And then Tonga explodes two weeks later. Um, somebody asked me about a hurricane for Florida a couple of years ago. I think you might have been on that live stream as well. I know a bunch of people here were on that live stream. And I just said, it's it's not coming this season, but the one that I see cuts the state in half. Well, as we know, Ian came and I predicted the exact landing point. And at that point, I became very uncomfortable with my abilities because I was like, because you heard me lament, you know, with the Beirut explosion. I mean, you were right there. You were like, you had yeah. the map up right away yeah. and you were focusing in and you were trying to help me. Yeah. You know, and we're doing a crypto review. And but the 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 geo uh, political economic things um, and natural disasters are going to affect our uh, support of the blockchain industry. I don't want to give anyone the idea that you're sitting here gambling with a medium because that you're not a light worker, then you're a dark worker because gambling is not what I'm doing here. I see the future. I see that blockchain needs to survive in order for us to survive as you know humanity and i've got good news <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's gonna make it but between now and then it's like I, i've described it before it's like a game of whack-a-mole so you see a lot of stuff all over the place and you're talking about miners mining companies that you can buy in the stock market um blockchain is affecting everything it is it really is it's affecting a lot of things and these these institutions and entities you know, they kind of rolled out the way we always thought they would roll out. They would kind of, you know, well, if, you know, if you're going to financialize something like a Bitcoin or crypto, um, you're going to want to be able to financialize what produces those blocks or validates those blocks. Right. So it's really important. So, yeah, I'm just super excited. You know, I think people let, let's do this just real quick before we get into the uh, questions. I think we should do this. You know, I think people should recognize, you know, what they've been through in 2022. Um, it was really the worst year in crypto ever, uh, not only for, you know, the companies and networks and people that got decimated or people that had money in certain things. Um, but just it was just kind of a kick in the stomach, you know, um, to a lot of people that really like this technology are interested in this in this thing called crypto. And, you know, we're way past this now, uh, trying to come out of a lot of these now. So. I'm glad that people have been having a wonderful year. I'm having a wonderful year in crypto and uh, I hope it just goes on and continues. But I'm, I'm just, you know, to think about where we were and where we're at now is just uh, night and day, isn't it? Yeah, it sure is. And back in 2017, 2018, when you and I were still, we were in blockchain, but we hadn't met yet. Uh, there was a lot of speculation as to whether or not blockchain was ever going to even exist. So the key for me was I knew that it was going to survive, but the key to me was to find the survivors, to buy into and support the blockchain technology that I felt that I could see would exist in the future because it didn't, you know, I mean, if you held on to your Bitcoin, even if you only had like a few hundred of them by the time, yeah. you know, it went to 10 or 20,000. Yeah. It was definitely worth the while. And when Absolutely. I look at the number of people who have like 100,000 stellar lumens, I mean, that's an old, old one, right? And you hear about it all the time. Now I'm seeing all these these thumbnails with price predictions for stellar lumens. How <laughs> high could it go, right? And it's like, you know what? Even if it went to a buck 50, all of us here, we got it made in the shade. I mean, you know, it's it doesn't have to really move a whole lot. It's just being part of the blockchain technology that survives and we see it growing, morphing, changing. Um, it looks like Polygon seems to be a really big chain of choice for many of the companies out there today. Yeah, it's a wonderful L2 and really works well. It's built out well. They're continuing to develop. I saw that they had some uh, management shakeups over there. I think the shakeups there are gonna actually be really good for the chain and the network. Um, I'm super excited. Um, it, it, they're, it's my favorite L2 by far. Um, I, I use it all the time. It's very efficient. Um, I just love it. So yeah, I'm a nerd. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and jump into some of these questions, Sam, if you don't mind. This one is from Solio and it says, do you have any news on XRP and VET? <clears throat> well, the only news I have is I was looking at my, I brought my BitFi wallet with me. That's where my XRP is. When I bought XRP a number of years ago, I just moved it onto my BitFi wallet and there it sits. 
So I carried it with me when I went out of town. So that's what I'm thinking, like any time. So that's if I'm carrying around my BitFi wallet so I can charge it and get into my XRP. Oh, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. I got to open up that that uh, account with uh, that Canadian company, yeah. w- which yeah. I can trade in my XRP. So I'm getting on that because I feel like, I mean, and if I said it's the summer of Doge, well, the XRP has got to be the bull flag. Um, vet, I've never gotten rid of any of my vet. I hold 100% of what I've had since back in the beginning um, when it was, I think it was a quarter of a penny when we were looking at vet. And of course, you know, missed opportunities are, geez, it went as high as like 28 cents. So, you know, at a quarter of a penny, I had already surpassed my first selling point. But again, just like Doge, I mean, it just blew past for me. I was like, whoa, I ended up selling my Doge for more than what I thought my original jump off was going to be, but then I totally missed my vet. So I am <clears throat> like most people, when you miss it the first time, you're always happy to know. I was very relieved when I was like, oh, we're going to do another run to 3 trillion before all this calamity. I mean, we could go to eight, but I'll tell you, I don't care. I'm going to be half out when we run to three. And then if I miss it, I don't care. Like sure. if really, I mean, if that, that had ended up going to, you know, a dollar or a dollar fifty. But if I had sold off half of it by the time it was twenty five cents, I don't think I would have been too upset over that. You know, just because when you look at what your original price is and stuff. So you have to get your head around that. I think that people in the fast in the past had a lot of fear about missing out as far as selling off too early. And I I, I think with the crypto, I know with the cryptos, you have to just just shake that out of your head and say. You know, if you had $15,000 and at the end of the day, you ended up with like 200 or 300,000, you know, I mean, people are shooting for the 10 and 20 million and that it's just wrong to do that. You're just going to end up wrecking yourself. And, you know, hold gold um, said that he learned a lot of lessons in 2022. And I'm glad for that because a lot of people here are headed for some really big financial responsibility. Some of you will miss your cell po- will miss your cell points because things will move so fast. What you're holding goes like a hundred times more than what you were going to press. Do you know what I mean? Like I see that yeah. coming for people and it's like, it's a good thing you learned your lessons because now you'll be ready. Cause before you wouldn't have been, you would have just, some of you would have already been back in the poorhouse by now. <laughs> you know, I see this every cycle. Um, been doing this a long time there's a psychological condition that keeps people um, from taking advantage of their current situation they spend too much time worrying about what they could miss out on and not recognizing what they actually have already obtained so i think people should do that i also think a lot of retail crypto people are very very good at buying not very good at selling so even if you don't have very much experience selling you should probably get acquainted with that process and become comfortable with it um yeah, things like this. I think it's just really important. Um, I probably have other things to say about that, but I hope people are excited. I hope that people are getting away from thoughts of multiples and price. I hope people are thinking about goals and portfolio management because that's where their heads need to be now is goals and portfolio management and um, you know, not get too concerned or overly concerned about a price or a multiple. So um, yeah. It just means you're you're growing up as a as a real crypto coiner. So that's all that means. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at this one from Will Mill. Hey Sam, do you think we'll see ADA over three dollars again this year? Yeah, for the run to three trillion, because I do see a lot of stuff coming. You know, as far as calamities and things that have nothing to do with blockchain or or cryptocurrencies at all. You know, we went through our calamity um, with the whole FTX and you know, all those dishonest people, scammers, and, you know, poor people who had poor business acumen were also exposed. You know, some people should not have been, or, you know, should not have allowed themselves to run these organizations just because, you know, really great programmers, good heart, whatever, but they just needed to realize that you can't take people at face value. Um, you know, when people say to you, oh, what, you know, do you think I'm, I've had people say that to me, oh, what, do you think that I'm lying to you or whatever? And I just look at them and go, 
well, I can't run my business like that. What do you think I can run my business like that? That I just, I'm just going to take everybody at their word. I, I, I ran a business for 32 years and, you know, I, I made money every single year and I made money every single year because I didn't take people at their word. I investigated what they said and some people, um, you know, turned out to be huge scam artists. And I watched many of my colleagues get um, hung up for, you know, $100,000, $150,000 in liabilities because they hired a criminal. They were responsible for um, those stolen commissions because they didn't do their due diligence. And, you know, it's very discouraging to people when they have that happen to them. But I always say, well, look at how did that happen to you? I mean, you've gone off on how horrible this person is and stuff. You know, but you're always going to have criminals always around, have criminals. always. But so what can you do to protect yourself? You know, do you lock your doors? You know, because many of the times that we've had stuff stolen out of our vehicles, it was opportunist criminals, right? Somebody yeah. who came in through an open door. And that's, you know, you can also apply that to your cryptocurrencies as well. So, you know, lots of stuff on the brain right now with what's, going on um, in the world of finance. You know, I think part of that was uh, people wanted to believe, they wanted to believe that there were these people out there that uh, they thought maybe were like them or interested in the same things they were. They call it a confidence game for a reason uh, because you let your defenses down and and in a scam artist, you know, somebody like SBF or somebody else gains your confidence and you stop being um, critical. You stop uh, looking at it objectively and you're kind of all in. So. You know, it's hard. I get it. Uh, we've all been victims of it. Um, but, you know, there's you can only do one thing, and that's stand up, brush yourself off, and get back on the horse, you know, or decide to go home. And <laughs> that's about it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so just be aware. You know, I think people should just, you know, have their heads on a swivel, understand um, what's happening. And, you know, that's that's good. It's good for people. Um, I don't know what else to say. Lighting, light green eyes has one here. Hey, Sam, you mentioned in the next run, people better take some profits. If we decide to take profits, will we be able to reinvest some in a dip before the big run up? And is this the run that you talked about? Certain cryptos not surviving. So take your profits or would that be years uh, from now in a big run? I know we have to make our own decisions, but some info like this helps us to make the right ones. Thanks, Sam. And well, <clears throat> the way that I would translate what I'm seeing is that when the people on the other side said, okay, you're going to have another chance for the three trillion. Now, my interpretation of that as well is, well, I see a great big wave coming in the distance. It's huge, but it's behind like the three trillion one. So obviously the three trillion one's coming again, but there might be another dip behind that. And it, it won't necessarily last for years. Um, but the cryptocurrencies that run to the 3 trillion, they may not be part of, some of them may not be part of future big runs. So if you have some things right now, like I was looking at uh, crypto on the premium live stream, someone asked me about it and it's, and it's 24 hour volume was only like 700,000, right? So I was like, well, you know, that one may not survive and we should probably look at, you should probably look at getting rid of that on the next run. And I, I'm, I'm looking at doing a lot of what you've already done, Muant, is uh, sitting down and on the next run, <clears throat> getting rid of a lot of the coins so that I only have maybe five or six to focus on uh, because yep. there are like, there's a lot of ones that I hold and they're still surviving. And they have enough volume that you can get some liquidity. So as soon as the market starts to have more retail money coming into it, those ones will go easily 20 to 50 times, even though they're not worth anything close to, for example, what a Polygon is going to be doing or what Ethereum is going to be doing. And so by getting ready to release those and roll the money into, because you, what I'll do is I'll put it into cash, right? And then I will, I will reassess at that time and probably be buying different ones. 
And so the answer is yes, you will have an opportunity to invest in the future in blockchain. Blockchain's not going away, just the block, just the chains that are surviving and being used will be will be changed. Just like you you see big cities in the United States or around the world that used to be huge, like happen in places like Havana. For example, yeah. Havana in the 1950s, oh, wow, that was a happening place. Like if you lived in the United States, like in, anywhere in like Florida or Texas or yeah. anywhere, like you would get on a plane, you'd fly to Havana, right? And that was like going to Miami, right? Yeah. Now you go to Miami because of what's <laughs> going on. So, so my point of all that is imagine that in blockchain, right? But right. sped up so that what you're... The road you're traveling on or the city that you're going for a vacation right now is very different than 10 years from now. And so keep that in mind. I wouldn't hold on to any cryptocurrency like for a super long time. Um, I think people who were holding Bitcoin and expecting it to go to a million dollars, I don't expect to see that. But I'll tell you right now, if Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, Ethereum, I mean, the multiple on Ethereum is going to be like huge compared to the multiple on Bitcoin. Yeah, I just like to say, too, I, I think I'm not much of a chart person, uh, but I'm pretty intuitive and I've been doing this a long time. Um, but I think Ethereum's actually ready for a nice run here. I, I actually think we're coming right up on it. So I'm getting excited. Uh, I think we're just days or weeks away. So we'll see how that plays out. But I'm really getting excited. Um, Ursula's got one here. Let's go ahead and take a look. Hey, Sam and Moon, which coins do you see will be the winners by the end of 2023 when looking back and doing a review on December 31st, 2023? So if you could project into the future or what are you excited about? Well, I agree with your comment about Ethereum. And I feel like I felt like maybe even September we could see that 12,000 because we've never seen that before. I saw no. I saw us going to 4,000 or beyond. And that was mm -hmm. back when we were buying it at around a hundred, $120. Cause someone wanted to know it was 400 and it was kind of hanging around there and they were like, Oh, should I still get it? Is it too much? I was like, no, no, actually I see it go 10 times to 4,000 and then the 12,000. So yeah, you should get it. And they did. And then it went all the way, I think to 4,700. Hopefully they took some profits like a lot yep. of people did. Um, yeah, but yeah, I definitely agree. Ethereum would be one to 12,000. I do think Cardano will see its all-time high again, like Will Mill asked. So yeah, three bucks easily. I'll I'll probably put some sell price though around like two dollars and fifty cents, just just because I mean we my lowest price on that was like two cents. Exactly. So, I mean, yeah. I think and the top price, what was it like? Seven, <laughs> something ridiculous. I just three I just bucks. like don't be too greedy. Yeah, yeah. don't be too greedy. Yeah. I mean, three bucks on. Uh, on seven cents, you know, or two dollars and fifty cents from seven cents. So just think about yeah. it that way, right? So yeah. I think maybe even Will Mill, worst case scenario, might be twenty cents or something, right? So sure, real. That's a good um, sell. So that uh, Matic Polygon will again see go blow past its all time high. Um, you know, I think Solana. For me, like I didn't own any Solana at all. I accepted that I missed it. I was like, okay, well, I missed Solana, right? But then when it had its big pullback and when FTX happened and people were yeah. like, oh, it's dead, it's going to be, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> That's when yeah. I got the most information about Solana, actually, was when everybody's brains were exploding <laughs> around <laughs> Solana, right? I was right. like... That's when, and then when I get the opposite information of what everybody's telling me who should know what they're talking about, kind right. of like with Doge, right? As soon as sure. I got people insulting me who were like, oh, I'm a developer and blah, blah, blah. I go, I'm definitely right. And I was like, to the people, I'm like, I'm buying more. And they were like, no, you're not. You only know that because of us. So remember the rules. But anyhow, so that, that would be so Solana Avalanche also, when you were asking the question, uh, they showed mm -hmm. the Avalanche came up. So. Okay. Okay, great. Thanks, Sam. Um, this next one here is from Solar Dragon. Hey, Sam and Moo, let's play a game. Okay, let's do it, dude. Um, which crypto would be wise to hodl and stake for a longer period of time to earn rewards? ADA, DOT, Matic, Solana, or Tezos? I think Cardano is the one that, yeah, that was the one that I, before they gave me the list. That mm -hmm. one came up first. Uh, 
And oh, there was another one too. I'm pretty sure uh, maybe Tezos. So those are the ones like for the long game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Barton's got one here. What are the two best Q Labs to buy this July? Thank you, Sam and Luann. Oh, well, I would say like Ethereum because a lot of people here have, you know, some no risk money coming in. Um, and, and just on a side note, um, I have another property being sold this fall. And the people on the other side told me again, they were like, you're not allowed to put that money in, remember. Because that was the same with, remember the house? And I like had all this cash and I yeah. wanted to put it in. It was like November and I was telling everybody, put it all in. And I, I wanted to put in like so all this money. And the people on the other side were like, remember what we told? I was like, oh no. Because I was so worried if I put it in. I was like, if I put it in, yeah. then it's not going to come. I'm going to curse it, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. I think to myself, yeah, but you're not that important. I'm like, yeah, but they told me not to do it. Yeah, but you're not that important. But they told me not to do it. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> so, so anyways, you're asking that question. And I'm just like, yeah. yeah. And I think about it because someone asked me, oh, I heard you're selling your blah, blah, blah. You know, what do, what do you think you want for it? Because they're ready to make me an offer that they used to live there. And I yeah. think they're they're upset that they you know, sold and can't, and they want to get back in there. Um, and then I was thinking, well, if I sold right now, I could get, I could get some more of the, I could get some more avalanche. Some of the stuff I'm short on. Right. And then the people on the other side were like, you're not allowed remember. And so that was the same as last time. So I wanted to share that with you guys. Cause sure. I just remembered when you asked that question, I was like, Oh, I'm going to yeah. tell everybody it's the same as last time. So Ethereum for September, cause that's what I would do. I would like sell, my beach house and i would have just taken all of my money yeah. like my cash out on it because i made a lot on it i bought it but like in 2010 sure and i would have just taken the cash and um because i'm thinking too the u.s dollar is going to stay down so that's going to work for me doubly and then i was just going to buy like some ethereum oh and the other one was solana i was driving the truck home i was thinking about it i was like i could buy some solana and then the people on the other side go yeah it'll be worth three times too bad you're not allowed <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, they're teasing me now. This is getting out of control. Anyway, so yes, yeah, Solana and uh, but again, don't 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 wreck everything by loading the boat more than you norm than you would like as a normie who has seen a lot of my stuff come true. Yeah. Let's roll over. Let's just see. Uh we did this last week. I, I kind of like to do this every once in a while. Let's go take a look year to date. Let's see where things are at. Bitcoin's up 83%, Ethereum's up 55%. We go ahead and take a look at Solana. It is up 119. Um, you know, people that swooped in when everyone was very, very afraid, and even the team was afraid. They didn't know uh, how they were going to pay employees there for a moment. Um, you know, it went from eight dollars, and it's currently uh, at 22. So that's great, yeah. good to see. Um, Litecoin's up what 40 percent, 35 percent. If we kind of go take a look, Bitcoin Cash that's up 181 percent. Just kind of scrolling through the list here. Um, but yeah, I kind of just wanted to mention some of those. Um, yeah, let's jump back to the questions here. Um, this one is from Schneza. Sorry if I didn't say your uh, name right. Um, hi, Sam and Moo. Thank you and the people on the other side. Any thoughts on Gala coin reaching a dollar this year? I think it's currently about two and a half cents. Um, I would say that for this year, We'll see some big gains and um, Gala's big year is probably going to be like 2025. Um, yeah, I think that it's going to be more favored um, as the re as retail and the pension funds expand and get more into the blockchain technology um, and then the gaming takes another, takes another run, you know, so then, so Axie Infinity runs again, Star Atlas runs, Scala runs again. So those, when I got the note, I was like, oh, that'll be a few years. It's not when I'm like my Doge and some of my Ethereum and Matic and a few other ones. Yeah, I have some plans for condos, like with mm -hmm. those more recent. But with Gala, I was thinking uh, that I think I'll be looking in the U.S. by the time I'm. I really felt I'd be looking in the U.S. by the time sure. I was cashing in anything from the Gala, and so that would be more 2025, I think. 
So yeah, that's what that's what I would peg it as. I think I would. I mean, I was definitely early with Gala, but again, you know, if you just buy these things, you set them aside, and then you just wait, then that usually works really well with the type of thing that I do. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Appreciate that. And uh, I've been enjoying playing Poker Go over there. I'm a big poker fan. Uh, have been for years and years and years. But there's a wonderful uh, Hold'em and uh, some other games over there in Omaha um, where you can play poker. And it's really cool. It's really awesome. I like how they're putting it together. 